the evidence that we see too far on a globe, has become overwhelming. Here we see a scene of the Lake District in the north of England, taken at over 80 miles away. The yellow distances at the bottom show the height of the peaks above the supposed curve of the Earth, according to globe mathematics. Many of the figures are negative, meaning that the peaks should be hidden by the curve, sometimes by hundreds of feet. The only explanation provided by proponents of the globe, is the theory that light might curve around the Earth, but any evidence still remains elusive. Meanwhile, scenes such as this continue to be published, and are reminders of the lack of any proven curvature. Perhaps due to the inability to explain away such clear evidence, Photos such as this one here have become popular over the last couple of years. It shows an apparent drop in distant objects. A spirit level such as the apparatus here is used to indicate observer level, or true level. As we look into the distance, it appears that objects such as mountain ranges, drop below this. We're told that the only explanation is a curved earth. Variations on the same theme are also presented, where distant mountains are analyzed against a nearer reference point, such as a tower. Calculations are made with Euclidean geometry, and comparisons are made between a flat plane and globe. The various heights and distances are explained. Lines are drawn on the photo to represent the key concepts, such as observer level, and the horizon. We are told that if the Earth really was flat, then distant objects should be significantly higher than what we see. The same logic is then applied to the globe where the distant objects are wrong but in the other direction, and by a lesser amount. On the basis of this, the globe is declared to be the winner. The logic in these arguments is built on a number of unproven assumptions. The most fundamental of which is that our vision is Euclidean, or linear. How do we know that what we see before us is what's really there? In short, we don't. We already know that our brains invert the image, and the image may have also been similarly processed in other ways. Here we see a scene which follows the rules of Euclidean geometry, and yet something about it doesn't sit right. It feels too straight, and almost contrived. Instinctively, some artists understand this, and choose not to follow Euclid's rules when it comes to depicting scenes such as this, preferring instead to trust their own senses. Is visual space Euclidean? In other words, can Euclidean geometry, such as trigonometry, be used to make predictions about our vision? As you can see, mathematicians have been divided over this, but most think that it is not Euclidean, despite popular belief amongst the public and mainstream science. If these mathematicians are correct, and vision is not Euclidean, then any use of diagrams where Euclidean geometry is assumed, lacks all legitimacy. Here are some quotes from a book called The Geometries of Visual Space, by Mark Wagner. The world is Euclidean. When distances are measured by a ruler, the square of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the two legs to a high degree of approximation, just as Euclidean geometry would predict. The same definite conclusions cannot be made regarding visual space. For over a millennium, Mathematicians believe that Euclid's geometry was the only one possible. Asking what geometry best describes visual space would have made no sense to them. Visual space could only be Euclidean. The self-evident certainty of Euclidean geometry crumbled in the early 19th century as a result of mathematical investigations of the parallel postulate. Local regions of the space are essentially Euclidean. On the macro level however, straight lines in physical space may appear curved in visual space. Visual geometry is a shifting changing thing that is not defined by a single geometry, rather it is best thought of as a family of geometries. A significant clue that vision is not Euclidean is that it breaks Euclid's fifth postulate which states that parallel lines never meet. Here we see two parallel lines of a railway track. We know that they don't really meet but according to our eyes and cameras they are perceived to meet in the distance due to the limitations of vision. Therefore, it must be assumed that vision is not Euclidean. If Euclidean geometry is used to disprove flat Earth then surely some evidence should first be provided to establish its legitimacy. 
without this evidence then no claims can be made by the use of Euclidean geometry such as curve calculators, angular size or orthogonal views. Modeling tools are often used to replicate real-world observations, in an effort to disprove flat Earth, but they do not represent our true vision at all. If you create a pair of parallel lines and zoom into the distance, the two lines will always be resolved due to the fact that the lines are simply mathematical equations in Euclidean space, and can thus be distinguished into infinity. This is not the case in the real world, where eventually the two lines will converge to a single point, no matter the power of the zoom. Likewise, the bottoms of objects such as mountains and towers remain fully visible in modeling tools, despite limitations in real vision such as angular resolution, and convergence, as top and bottom meet. The problem with 3D modeling is this, nothing ever actually vanishes at the vanishing point. Instead, all objects remain fully resolvable. Rather than talking about the limits of vision as though it is a problem, we need to understand that it's this very phenomenon which provides our true perspective view. The world would look very alien if we saw it through linear, or Euclidean eyes. In this paper by Caspar J. Erklins, it states, a single parameter, that is, the distance of the vanishing point, transforms the geometry of physical space into that of perspective space. In summary, it is the reality of objects vanishing, due to our limited vision, that brings about true perspective. As such, Euclidean geometry should not be assumed as valid in any calculations. Richard Engel was also convinced that vision was not Euclidean. Here he says, The thesis which I wish to present and defend in this paper is this, there is a geometry, which fits precisely and naturally the configurations of the pure visual field, and that the geometry is not a Euclidean geometry, but a two-dimensional elliptic, or Riemannian geometry. The space of Euclidean geometry is everywhere, and in all directions constituted alike, it is unbounded and infinite in extent. On the other hand, the space of sight, or visual space, as it has been termed by Johannes Muller and Herring, is found to be neither constituted everywhere, and in all directions alike, nor infinite in extent and unbounded. Angle is saying here that visual space has natural limitations, which must be taken into account, whereas Euclidean geometry, including its use in 3D modeling tools, has no such limitations because it fails to deal with the vanishing point, and so continues into infinity, thus producing unfaithful renderings of scenes. Flat earthers have claimed that the ground rises to eye level. Is this strictly true? The ground will initially rise, but due to the limitations of our vision, it will only extend so far, until a point is reached where the angle to the floor will be too small to resolve. In this case, if that angle is between the blue and red lines, then the observer will be unable to see the red block, and all subsequent blocks. As such, the ground will appear to drop away, due to this resolution limit. This also applies to objects attached to the ground, such as mountains and towers. The ceiling on the other hand, being much higher, will continue to drop to eye level as predicted. Sky always dominates at the point of convergence, because it is much higher and so easier to resolve. Once we begin to appreciate this, then the images which depict an apparent drop in ground level, start to make more sense on a flat plane. In the real world, the ground will not rise indefinitely, whereas in the world of 3D modeling it will, due to its inability to replicate the all-important vanishing point. This is a well-known scene in the Flat Earth community, which generated much discussion about a year ago. It was even famously responsible for persuading one Flat Earther that he had made a huge mistake, and he since reverted back to the globe model. The trickery was done with the use of Euclidean geometry. Orthogonal views were presented, heights and angles were calculated, lines were drawn on the photo, 3D models were created, and Flat Earth was destroyed, allegedly. This was all based on the false assumption that trigonometry in the Euclidean space, was valid for vision. Let us be very clear about the two different models. The true model of a linear or Euclidean plane, and spherical vision, indicated here as model A, has been exchanged for the spherical Earth, and Euclidean vision, of model B. When analysis is performed, 
and comparisons are drawn between the globe and flat earth models, it is wrongly assumed that the Euclidean geometry belonging to model B, can be applied to model A, the flat earth model. Many of my observations are concerned with challenging the spherical earth model B, and its use of Euclidean geometry, with curve calculators and orthogonal views. The figures simply don't add up, and we see much further than we should. However, that same Euclidean geometry cannot then be used to challenge the flat earth model A. If flat earth is to be challenged, then it must be done with the correct geometry of spherical vision. Critics then demand the mathematical equations of this spherical vision. Despite hundreds of years of research, vision still remains largely a mystery, and there should be no shame in admitting this. But, let's stop imagining that the ground is curved instead of our vision, in order to make equations fit observations. Besides, it is an assumption to claim that all natural phenomena can be reduced to mathematical equations. Unfortunately, mathematics continues to be considered as the source of ultimate truth, as has been the case since the Greeks. We may be able to make some predictions about our spherical vision on a flat plane, by imagining that the Earth is curved instead. Indeed, this is how our vision has been reverse-engineered into the globe, and explains why it has so successfully deceived the public at large and mainstream science. However, the model of the globe proves nothing about reality itself. The truth is, there are many elements at play to bring us this scene, which cannot be reduced to mathematics. At near distances, Euclidean geometry can be used as a good approximation for basic predictions in visual space, but as mathematicians have already remarked, the same cannot be said of long distances. The claim is often mistakenly made that photos are our true source of reality, but cameras are designed to imitate our eyes, and are also subject to the same limitations of vision. At long distances, objects simply vanish, ground does not rise to eye level, vision is finite and bounded, and parallel lines meet. This photo represents a subjective view of a landscape, from an observer's perspective. Each object is subject to the various constraints of limited vision, each with its own vanishing line, and disconnected from that of other objects. What we have before us, is a collage of many different subjective views, woven together, each subject to a family of geometries, as described earlier by Mark Wagner in his book. Convergence, angular resolution, mirages, weather conditions, angular size, spherical vision, compression, and vanishing points, all contrive together, to bring us this final scene. In conclusion, any attempt to analyze the scene with Euclidean geometry, is simplistic, and crude. And most importantly, it will lead to misleading results.